Our story of Molly Moon starts at a spooky and depressing orphanage called Hardwick House. The lady running the place, Mrs. Adderstone, has typical Disney villain energy, with her pinched mouth and strict rules. According to Molly, no one's allowed to have any fun under her watch. She's horrible. Yeah, sounds about right. In an orphanage and they can't play? Come on. Molly's in the laundry room, trying to have some privacy and just read her books. When she and her buddy Rocky think it'd be a good idea to steal some bread and ketchup from the kitchen for a snack. In true kid fashion, they giggled too loudly and caught the grumpy Mrs. Adderstone's attention. She wasn't afraid to shame them for being hungry and wanting to have fun. Molly isn't afraid to dish it back though and takes all of the blame for the other kids being up. Well, they might be mad at her after this one. Molly's on toilet duty forever now and the others have to go to bed at 6 p.m. until further notice. To make matters worse, they can only eat fish soup for every meal. Even the cook seems to sympathize with the kids for not wanting to eat a bowl of giant fish head soup. At least the kids don't seem mad at Molly. Molly's looking at a flyer for a talent show that's coming up. She thinks that Rocky should enter. Apparently, he has some kind of brilliant talent. They didn't even take to the end of breakfast before several of the kids had Molly riled up by saying that she was rejected by her parents. But don't worry, Mrs. Adderstone was quick to shut them all down, screeching at Molly with that same evil stepmom tone and belittling attitude, dooming her to more chores for the week. First toilets, now dishes. Good old Rocky's a nice kid though and volunteers to help his friend Molly with her new chores. He's holding a guitar. Must be that secret talent we were talking about earlier. Gonna get out of this place. Now bullying is the real problem of this story. Mrs. Adderstone overhears him talking about that talent show again. Neither of you are going anywhere. And says that they'll only leave the orphanage if they get adopted. She crushes their spirits like the villain she is. I don't know what that girl's smiling about. She's in the same situation as Molly and Rocky. Molly stops to confide in the only nice employee at the orphanage, Mrs. Trinklebury. At least Molly has somebody not trying to bully or scream at her to, you know, talk to sometimes. Well, besides Rocky, of course. Now the next day, Molly's still upset and is clearly showing it. I hate this place. Oh yeah, Molly, I hate it too. Instead of doing her cross-country run, she makes her way into town where she visits the library and the familiar librarian. Molly even has a nice little cubby for her reading sessions. Oh, how cozy. Everyone's peaceful library experience was stopped short when a man, looking a little familiar, I don't know, maybe he's lost. He's looking for the Book of Hypnotism, which he claims is in that library. I've been looking for that book for a very long time. The librarian says that she knows that it was there, but they haven't been able to locate it for years. Now, as Molly's overhearing his belittling attitude conversation with a nice librarian, she very conveniently finds the book that the man's looking for. Really? It's just been under the radiator the whole time, and no one has found it all these years. Molly opens the book and a strange green glow radiates from it. Yeah, time to leave. Who knows what this guy will do to get his hands on the book and he seems pretty adamant. He's the kind of guy that knows what he wants and will stop at nothing to get, even if it means chasing down little girls in broad daylight like a crazy person. Back to the laundry room to investigate her new mysterious book. She has to stare into her own eyes until she's in a trance. Sounds boring. Why not practice on Mrs. Adderstone's annoying pug? Molly proceeds to follow the book's instructions, but with green glowing eyes. Molly tells Petula that he won't be mean anymore and somehow it seemed to work. Her celebration wasn't long lived though as Rocky came in to hit her with a guilt trip of not helping him practice. Come on Rocky, just go and make a girl feel terrible. Don't let me down again. Rocky brings up that they have to eat fish vomit soup all week, prompting Molly to consider using her newfound talents on Mrs. Edna, the cook. Mrs. Edna is like those undervalued and angry cooks that work for crappy bosses. She puts all her hate for her job into the food, and everyone is tasting that misery, but not this time. Molly works her new magic on the woman and quickly changes that woman's tone. Ah, spaghetti for dinner tonight. Who doesn't love some good Italian food? Mrs. Adderstone, that's who. The kids were ecstatic to eat something that actually tastes good instantly earning Mrs. Edna some favors among the children. Mrs. Adderstone, not too happy. Come on, lady, lighten up. 
Even Trinkleberry spoke up, saying that it was actually nutritious for the kids. Finally, someone's standing up to that rotten woman. This is a letter from a Mr. and Mrs. Alibi. She quickly brings up that there's a rich couple coming to adopt one of the older children, even though she doesn't think that they deserve it. Adderstone says that it's Rocky's lucky day. It's your lucky day. And that he's expected to be the one who gets adopted. This upsets Molly, Rocky, and even Mrs. Trinkleberry. She makes threats to Adderstone, saying she's gonna be forced to talk to the governing board about her decision to split up Molly and Rocky, who were supposed to be adopted together. Meanwhile, we find our second Disney villain from the library, Mr. Knockman. He's got some kind of business finding odd novelty items, and also has a mother who looks strangely like Mrs. Adderstone. What's better than having your mother emasculate you for your decisions? Well, she's in the same business of finding novelties, which really just translates to them being thieves. Somehow he knows Molly's last name and has plans to find her and steal the hypnosis book. Knockman finds the address and makes his next move, although he's not exactly sneaky. Adderstone may hate the kids in her orphanage, but thankfully she's not going to let some stranger meander around, so Knockman states that he's just there to apply for the Help Wanted ad. Knockman very quickly regretted that decision. Talk about a crappy job. Poor Mrs. Trinkleberry's threat to Adderstone didn't go unnoticed and hatched a plan to have the woman injured. It unfortunately worked and now Molly is down an alley. With Knockman lurking around the orphanage now, it's certainly not looking good for our young main character. Now thankfully, Molly's new hypnosis skills are pretty promising. The talent show is going to start soon, but Molly had to do something first. Hopefully she doesn't let Rocky down again. Mrs. Adderstone was next on her list of people to hit with the Be More Nice hypnosis spell. It seems like Adderstone may have fallen for the hypnotism, but how long is it going to last? Rocky and the rest of the orphanage are at the talent show now. The mean girl Hazel and her two henchmen put on an impressive rapping single, Shut the Front Door. While Molly was trying to do a good thing, she ended up missing Rocky in the talent show, something that she had promised him she'd be at. Now we remember how disappointed he was with her last time. Don't let me down again. Uh oh. Even with the work she did with Adderstone, everything should have worked out perfectly. He put on a pretty nice show for the new parents, too. He was leaving, and there was nothing she could do to stop it. You promised you'd be there for me, and you were. You promised. Yeah, nah, that's rough. Molly had a new plan now find Rocky and bring him back home. Knockman sees Molly and makes his move to grab her to find the book only earning himself a kick in the shin in Petula the Pug's 10 pounds of wrath. Molly uses those Jedi mind tricks to convince a man to let her ride the bus into London, and Knockman was left behind. Too bad for our friend Molly, the paper she took from the office was missing the address to the Alabasters, the people who had adopted Rocky. So it's time for Molly to practice her hypnotism again on unsuspecting citizens of London. She talks to a guy at a hotel for letting her stay in a suite. Hmm. Anyone catch that side eye from the lady? Ooh, I gotta learn how to hypnotize people if this is the kind of stuff I can get out of it. She enjoys her new arrangements and admires a popular young girl on TV. Britney and Pepsi, anyone? The same woman who had noticed Molly the day before approached her on her way out, finding similarities between her and herself. The woman doesn't seem to want trouble, but acknowledges that she knows what Molly's up to. Molly finds where Rocky and his new parents are living, surprising him in his new school uniform and hairdo. Nice hair too. He doesn't seem as impressed as she is, though, even when she brings up the hypnotism. Petula and Molly mope sadly in their hotel room after her disappointment with Rocky. The pug decides that they should check some TV, tuning into that same pop girl from earlier, Davina Nuttall. She's holding auditions that same day for backup dancers and extras for her videos, and Molly has the bright idea to go try out. In a true stroke of genius, Molly decides to pay a visit to Davina's burnt out and tired director, Barry Ricks. Hey, oh, how'd she get down those stairs so fast? It didn't take long for her to make short work of his ego and his desperation to be rid of Davina. Yes, look deep into the glowing eyes. Before she knew it, Ricks was making calls to agents and preparing to make Molly the next star. Hello, Molly Moon. Not only is Molly about to be a celebrity, but it looks like Petula is getting on the action as well. Who can resist a pug in a caterpillar costume? While Molly is pretty endearing and sweet looking, it doesn't appear that she actually has singing or dancing talent at all. Davina calls her out. This is a very likely problem. 
she's really not good. As she looks into how she can hypnotize an audience, she starts to realize that it's most likely not possible. That's a valid point, Molly. You probably can't, even with those eyes. Molly gets a call from the orphanage and finds out that there may be a flaw to the hypnotisms that she's done to Adderstone and the cook, Miss Edna. She lets us look after herself now. Well, while she may be nice now, she certainly doesn't care about the orphanage anymore. According to the kids, Edna has moved to Italy to open her own restaurant. A uh, good thing she ain't making that fish soup for the Italians. <laughs> Rocky overhears his new parents talking about how they may have to move to Tokyo but he'll have to stay at a boarding school so that it doesn't disrupt his school or guitar studies. Already, he just got there. Nachman over here mustn't watch a lot of TV as he hasn't noticed any of the giant billboards or commercials with Molly's face plastered all over it. His mother recognizes her name and something else. Rocky's new dad looks a little less awesome every time we see him. Dad's looking like he's contemplating the orphanage's return policy. What a jerk. And I'm not going to any boarding school. All eyes are on Molly as she takes the stage, which is exactly what she needed. What is that? It's a giant magnifying glass. You are going to love this. Everyone watching is dancing in the most atrocious way possible, and a few people notice that something was off. Rocky continues to have parenting issues, and Spider-Man's his way down the building. Yeah, I'd run away too. Davina, how'd she get into Molly's dressing room? She's snooping through Molly's possessions, finding the hypnosis book, just in time for Nachman to enter as well. Nachman's not a good fighter though, getting his butt handed to him by Davina while she's burning him with a hair straightener, spraying him in the eyes with perfume, and then just delivers an impressive upper kick to the face. Nachman once again is struck with bad luck when he tries to avoid Molly's security guard and only ends up falling several stories into a disgusting dumpster. You know, man, this guy seriously can't catch a break. That's when his mother has a great idea. You don't need them. You just need the girl. You mean kidnap her? Yeah. Molly's singing and performance has some people completely entranced and in tears, while others are staring at him like they've lost their minds. After everything was over, Molly realized that what she wanted wasn't fame and fortune, but really her friend Rocky back. You know, fame isn't everything it's cracked up to be, especially when you've hypnotized everyone for your own benefit. Molly feels bad and tells a crying Davina that she's sorry and recognizes that she is the true star of the show. She tells him that she's not meant for showbiz. That's right, Moon. At least she's kept some integrity in all this. Seems like it only lasted two days anyway. Molly tells Barry that she's not meant for the industry, but maybe Davina still is. Molly's pretty good at manipulation even when she's not using hypnotism. Finally, Molly and Rocky are reunited. And what's this? The nice lady from the hotel. Uh-oh, looks like Nachman had a bone up his sleeve, not Petula. In true criminal fashion, he left a threatening ransom note instructing her to meet him somewhere to get that dog back. He wants Molly to hypnotize some guys that are robbing a bank so that they can rob them afterwards. I can't rob a bank. How does she move so dang fast? Where did she come from? Very, very sneaky. Using the spooky green stair, she works her magic. Why is Rocky on the roof of an armored vehicle? That kid's really Spider-Man over here. It didn't take long for the dumb old Knockman to be double-crossed by his own mother. Hello, Sonny. You know, for a lady her age, that swing from the rope to kick him was wicked. Apparently, she's been in cahoots, maybe more than that, with the guys that they just robbed. Ah, oh, Knockman. You didn't even know what your own mother was up to. You don't have to be as... Uh, maybe you should just keep your mouth shut. Mama Nachman knew exactly what she was doing, and the entire purpose for having Molly wasn't really to hypnotize her own goons, but rather to open the iris scanner on the armored vehicle. After doing what she was told, she and Nachman are still in a cage. You stole something that wasn't yours, and you cheated. You'll want to talk. Yeah, that's true. Just when she thought that there was no hope of getting out, her hero Rocky emerges. With a clever arrangement of mirrors and even Nachman's help, she managed to use her glowing green eyes to lock the Mama Nachman and her henchmen in the back of the armored truck. Yes. Hey, looks like Nachman wasn't a total jerk after all. Yeah. So with their reward money, Rocky and Molly return to the orphanage with gifts in tow. 
Looks like they're going to play Santa Claus and his helpers this Christmas. And would you look at that, Mrs. Trinkleberry's back too. Adderstone had stayed in her room and had done some reflecting. Looks like she's going to leave the orphanage in Trinkleberry's hands. Hey, that's way better than Adderstone and her fish head soup. And that's a wrap, folks. Thanks for chilling with us on our recap of the adorable movie, Molly Moon and the Incredible Book of Hypnotism. Produced by Amber Entertainment and Lip Sync Productions. So, do you think that maybe Molly kept using her hypnosis powers after everything? Let us know in that comment section below with that hashtag cinema recap. We hope you guys had a good time. It's fun having you here. And if you enjoyed the content, smash the like button. Make sure to subscribe for more movies like this one. As always, till next time.